Hello and welcome back to this Down Idealistic Crusade. This video will be a review of the Kino Lorber Blu-ray release of the 1972 Robert Aldrich directed Western that is truly underrated and absolutely brutal. That is, of course, Olzana's Raid, starring Burt Lancaster and one of his best performances. Uh, this reunites them after Vera Cruz and Apache that would go on to make Twilight's Less Gleaming together as well. Uh, this is a blisteringly dark, honest film that tries to depict the, the situation between the U.S. cavalry forces and the Apache in the West uh, as honestly and as realistically as possible and it is not a film that claims to have any answers which is really its most powerful uh, facet the film tells the story of burt lancaster's indian scout character mackintosh who is tasked with leading uh, the, uh, a sort of very well, for lack of a better term, a very green young cavalryman played by Bruce Davison on a mission to track down and stop the, an Apache warrior, Ozana, who has broken out essentially of the reservations and is enacting a, a, a crusade of vengeance across the entirety of the landscape. And it's done in such a matter of fact style that it quickly becomes obvious and then it has to be you know, put into words by uh, Lancaster's very experienced character that uh, essentially Ozan is doing this for no better reason than there is simply nothing left. There is nothing left of of the of the ways of life the Apache once had, and that this is the only real way to even feel as if they exist. And so it is a a, a campaign of violence that was. Uh, started and continued over generations by not just the Apache, but the the you know the U.S. government and and the white settlers as well. Uh, it, and it is a film entirely about pain and grief and uh, the ways of life being destroyed. And again, it's a film that has no answers. It doesn't claim to have any answers. It simply presents a situation and tells you it is what it is and so the audience essentially takes the viewpoint of of the green cavalryman who is new to all of this and is in some ways you know a, a very uh, peacefully intentioned person being the son of a minister and thinking that you know oh well you just go in there and no one's ever talked it out and no one's ever made uh, peaceful overtones and then he's you know very much given the rude awakening and the film does not shy away from scenes of violence with uh, very you know disturbing graphically violent bits but it's never done for uh, the sake of gore and it's it's definitely not what you you know you would consider is too gory today, seeing as you can do just about anything today. But it is the impact of the violence in the scenes where it takes place, and the impact of why it is being done. And then you have characters stumble across mangled corpses that have been tortured, seemingly needlessly to death, and they're left only to ask why. And that why is really unanswered. Uh, the 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 uh, the violence definitely earns the R rating, but this is the type of film where the R rating had special meaning. It meant that this was a story that could be told that had real meaning behind it and it was not going to pull any punches and you know damned if it got the restricted rating that's sort of a badge of honor uh, the film was written by alan sharp it was one of his uh, first screenplays turned into a film who later go on to be involved with a number of really interesting films chiefly among them he wrote the 1975 masterpiece night moves which is directed by arthur penn which is one of the best films ever made i i would argue uh, uh, and one of the best films of the 70s, there is some of the same feeling of having no real answers in Night Moves that you have in Olzana's Raid. So I do think there is that sort of nice linking theme. And when I when I looked at his filmography, and then I, it just suddenly dawned on me, and it was like, oh, well, that, of course, makes sense <laughs> that he wrote both of them. But the the fact that this film was directed by Robert Aldrich is, is perfect because it is 
totally in his wheelhouse of that what he's sort of known for that no nonsense very very manly very action oriented matter of fact style that he could do uh, unlike anybody else and it adds such a layer of realism to this film that it feels like one of the most vibrantly realistic westerns you'll ever see uh, an another particular note that's unique to this film is there's a lot and this this will not sit well with most with every audience uh, there's a lot of horse violence in this film uh, western fans will know obviously that you know once uh, animal protection laws became more and more enforced that uh, thankfully horses were more protected and you didn't see as much of the old-fashioned practices like the awful trip wires and things uh, where horses could become very much injured but historically speaking, when there will be gunfights in the West, the, they, they chiefly would be involved in trying to stop people. And the easiest thing in the world to do would be to not shoot them, but to shoot their horse, which is a bigger target and would obviously stop them as they're trying to get away from you. So the fact that the, uh, the horse action in this film is very, uh, very keyed up and very much in every scene and very important because the horse is your livelihood in the rugged terrain but also in all the gunfights and the action sequences you see a lot of horse shooting and horses being put through the ringer and a lot of horse falls and a lot of uh again actively targeting and, and killing someone's horse to stop them and it's also about taking horses from others whether it's the apache forces trying to get new horse mounts to continue their their raid or uh, the cavalry forces led by the scouts trying to steal back horses or steal the apache's horses to stop them uh, so it's it's all very very grounded uh, in fact i think this is really one of the most grounded westerns i've ever seen and it is criminally unknown, uh, and what hurts the most, and wh why it's it's one of those films that you wish more people have seen and knew about, is I honestly don't know if there is a more upfront and honest film about the relations between the U.S. forces and the white settlers and the Apache tribes, or any Native American tribe, if you will, um, that it doesn't have to be specifically Apache. It is unflinchingly honest, and it will be a difficult watch for a lot of people because it doesn't sugarcoat things. It is a, a film about people who live and die and bleed, and uh, it is very much a, a very a, an obvious precursor to. Uh, the much darker and much more uh, character-centric Westerns that you will see today. Uh, and there have been a, f a few Westerns that did try to tackle similar subject matter and, and did a very good job at it in their own particular ways. Uh, I was always rather impressed with uh, the, uh, the Geronimo film that uh, Walter Hill directed based on the John Milius script. Uh, that is a rather impressive and very underrated and little seen film. And then I saw Ozana's Rage and then it was like, well, um, that was a pretty good film. But this this film is just far more intensive. So again, I don't know if there is a better film than Ozana's Raid for this particular subject matter. It is a blistering film. It's the type of film you watch when you want that really strong, dark cup of coffee type experience. You want something to wake you up and to stay with you. And that is about, you know, real things that happened. It is based around real historical figures. It is obviously dramatized a bit for the story being told, but everything that it is telling and doing is ripped straight out of history. So it, it, you, you get that uncomfortable sense of, you know, this stuff really happened. <laughs> uh, the, this is the, the darkness in all man. And also because it was made in 1972, you can't help but see the parallels, uh, which some have argued were intentional, some have argued were unintentional, but it seems pretty obvious that there, there were parallels being directly made to the U.S. involvement in Vietnam, because it being made and released in 1972, it just seems 
unavoidable with this subject matter. And it seems very clear that was the intention. And that adds a whole other layer to this film experience. So this is one of those films that I would recommend to any any fan of Westerns and especially any Burt Lancaster fans if you haven't seen it because his performance is incredible. You, again, you get that sense of just feeling every uh, weather-beaten line in his face. There are some close-ups where he has where, you know, it just the you feel the weight of a lifetime in a close-up and uh the the ending packs a wallop uh, so it is a blisteringly dark film it is not for everyone but it is one of the most uh just no frills intensively realistic westerns i think you can ever see and it is about truly dark disturbing honest subject matter and uh, i again i don't know that there is a better film made about the relations between the white settlers the u.s government forces and the native american tribes uh the, there had been several strides made before this point in classic westerns to try and present native americans as less cliches and as much more fully rounded three-dimensional human beings uh but those were only in certain areas you had great breakthroughs like 1950s broken arrow uh and and some other films um, even some of the sequences in how the west was won were, were, were trying to uh get at this subject matter more honestly uh john ford would sort of try and do something similar in 1964 with cheyenne autumn but this film just all cliches are gone and it is a brutal film this is this is the type of film that you could make in the 1970s this is the type of film you could not ever make today i uh, you just you could not no one would finance this no one would uh, even think of green lighting this and i i'm just so happy it exists i really am uh if had it not been the early 1970s and it you know being made on a relatively lower budget uh, i i don't see this ever getting done and it is you know all on real locations they're really out there and, and the arid desert type climate and you just feel the intensity of every sequence uh this is a film i think people should see and it pains me it's so underappreciated and little known it is one of lancaster's best performances it is one of robert aldrich's best films and that says a hell of a lot uh, so that's Ozana's Raid. I wanted to talk a little bit more about it because it, it is so underseen and underappreciated. And it's just one of those films when you see it, you just, <laughs> it's, it, it is it is a, um, it has an impact. It really does. Uh, so it it's unfortunate that it's had such a terrible time on home video. It's had very few releases and Universal has not really put, much into ever restoring it or presenting it well all the old releases were uh, open mats they were four by three i have the laser disc here which is pretty uncommon it also is four by three but at least it has a pcm mono soundtrack uh, it's also got the trailer on it as well which universal didn't always do uh, and then that was it that and it occasionally played on television and then uh very late into DVD, Universal snuck out a widescreen transfer in some of those uh, Western super packs where they crammed 10 movies onto two discs with terrible compression rates. And it was like, wait, what? They've got those on his raid. Is it a widescreen? I was almost tempted to buy one of those. And then it was released I believe, by Explosive Media in Germany on Blu-ray. Uh, but it, I guess it was the same master because it was a very old, uh, not very pleasing old HD master with a lot of issues. Uh, but it was at least out there on Blu-ray and actually on widescreen. The fun thing about the German edition, and what's important, is it also contained a PAL DVD of the alternate cut of the film. And what that refers to is, since they didn't always have the most agreeable relationship, they uh, Robert Aldrich and Burt Lancaster actually differed on the edit of the film. And since Burt Lancaster had producing power on this, just like he had had on Vera Cruz on uh, the last time they worked together, 
uh, the their differences of opinion were such that uh, Aldrich made a cut of the film, his director's cut, and that was released here in America, and then Burt Lancaster made a separate cut of the film, which was released in most of Europe and the UK. They are pretty much the same, but there are some scenes where the Lancaster cut uses some alternate takes, and there's a couple little tiny bits that are only in the Lancaster cut that Aldrich cut, for, cut out of the uh, release version here in the U.S., so uh, it's great that that was preserved there on the German release, but it was a PAL DVD, and from what I read, it's not a very good transfer. It's, I think it's actually not even letterboxed. So I had actually thought about importing that because I just really wanted to see the film in widescreen at least, and at least somewhat better looking than how I'd seen it before. And then Kino Lorber announced they were putting out a version here. Unfortunately, it is the same transfer as the German disc, so it's just, you know, you don't have to import that disc anymore but it doesn't include the alternate Lancaster cut or any of the scenes specifically in that version, which is a real shame. Uh, again, it seems the Lancaster cut only exists in an old standard def PAL master, I guess, for now, uh, but it would have been great to at least get the extra scenes or have some reference to it. Uh, I think that is really important to have, uh, but I can also understand since they're just using the same universal master and not doing a new scan, I can understand why that wasn't done. However, I do think those standard def materials should have at least been included as an extra. Uh, very thankfully, someone has uploaded most of them on uh, YouTube. Uh, I guess it seems like it's from an old VHS capture, but I will link to those in the description. It was amazing to find. So uh, I think it's three of the four, and they're all very small little bits, so it's not like anything major that's not in the director's cut we have, uh, but it's still great to see. So I will link to those so you can look at them yourself. So I definitely will waited a while before getting the Kino Blu-ray release because I was disappointed it wasn't a new transfer and I finally got it in one of their sales. So here it is. This was released in late 2020. Uh, it's got the lovely original poster art, you know, shrunken down from the laser disc dimensions and obviously originally the original poster dimensions. It's a standard Kino release. Unfortunately, it's not a special edition or a new scan, so it's just their standard label. But it does actually have some pretty significant extras, which is not common on standard Kino discs. So this has the original trailer, uh, which unfortunately doesn't look so hot. It's just old. I, I, I guess it's upscaled from standard def maybe, but uh, it, it's it's okay. At least it looks better on here than the version that's on the laser disc, which is really grungy looking. Uh, then it has, as usual, like Kino always does, it has the trailers from Hell piece where John Landis talks about the film. He pretty much says the same thing I did, where it's like, it is a brutal film. It is brutal. Uh, then there's, a, but really... What is worth the cost of admission are the two extras that were commissioned for this. So they sat down with Bruce Davison and did an interview. And it's a nice, like, you know, 20-minute piece. And he goes to town. He just, it, just no holds barred. It talks about how it was, you know, such an early film for him and so important in his career and all the things he learned in making it and working with Lancaster and working with Aldrich and just the experiences he got from it. Uh, it's a great piece. He is a wonderful interviewee. Uh, that alone is worth the, the cost of the entire disc release. It is a fantastic interview piece. And also, we get a brand new audio commentary done by Nick Pinkerton. Uh, at first, it, it was a little deceptive because at first, uh, he does the thing that a lot of commentators do where he'll give the sort of biographical background and list of film credits for all the main actors and supporting players. And uh, you're kind of waiting for the... the meat of the commentary to come through but uh, don't don't be put off that by that he it, he does deliver he gives some really great historical backgrounds to the film's plotting and uh, the real historical figures that inspired the characters in the film uh, also talk a great talk about the production and how it was developed and how there was some onset rewriting and how Alan Sharp reworked his script with Aldrich and Lancaster uh, the difference of opinion between director and star and why there are the two edits made he talks a bit about that and a little bit of the a little bit about the differences between the two cuts and some about the uh the the graphic violence in the film and also the depiction of the apache 
the uh, the the definite allusions to Vietnam in the film, and it's released in 1972, and also its uh, place among Aldrich's filmography and westerns, and how it uh, also a little bit he talks about how it compares to other films that deal with the same subject matter, and uh, especially I was happy he mentioned uh, the Geronimo film as well. So. It is a really solid commentary. I was very pleased because with commentaries, you never quite know what you're going to get into. And especially like with this one, when they start a little slow, you're kind of like, oh, well, I hope this picks up after a while. And and it does. It absolutely does. So uh, it itself is worth the cost of the disc. So uh, I, I recommend this disc for the new extras, which are exclusive to the Kino release. But uh, to talk about the transfer again, this is the same old universal master it has a lot of issues there's you know a lot of video noise it is kind of grainy but it is an older master so it doesn't always look that good uh it's got some edge enhancement and things like that Uh, but that being said it's not the worst thing in the world most reviews are you know will tell you that this transfer is pretty crummy and, you know, it's not a good Blu-ray and so on and so forth, which is, you know, th- that is true. But compared to what has existed before, it, it you know, it's actually in widescreen. <laughs> so that's a plus. I know it's not saying much, but I, I went into this expecting the worst and I was pleasantly surprised that it was, you know, definitely the best I had ever seen the film look, even though it is very obviously an old Universal Master back when they were cranking out really crummy video masters and uh, just it, it needs a new scan. Let's put it that way. It really does. And it is very obvious. This is the polar opposite of Kino's Vera Cruz release, which looks beautiful and is a big improvement over the old MGM releases. Here, you can definitely tell this is an old master, but this is the best you can do for this film now. So don't let that put you off. And also the new extras are really worth your time. So um, especially when this is at the low Kino cost, it's one of those discs that I still have to recommend, even though the transfer is not the greatest. So do keep that in mind. This does have the film's original mono soundtrack. It is losslessly encoded and it does sound good. I did my usual comparisons to the older releases, which here I just have the Laserdisc, which also has lossless mono. And comparing the two, the Laserdisc has a more natural hiss. It feels a bit more open and they're, they're seemingly coming from the same source track, but it does seem like the Laserdisc hasn't been hit with the same level of noise reduction. So in comparing the two, I do give the edge to the Laserdisc, but it is tied to an old open matted transfer that's I mean it's okay but it's not properly widescreen uh, and the blu-ray is pretty close in terms of the audio performance in short I just wish it sounded as good as the LT track so but that that's a that's a pretty common thing when I do these comparisons in terms of the audio and looking at the older less manipulated uh, releases compared to what you'll get on most modern day releases So with that being said, it is unfortunately not a very good transfer, and so this is going to be one of those Kino Blu-rays where they're at least getting the film out in print. It it does have some nice new extras to draw you in, but it is an old master, and that's just how it is for the time being. So unfortunately, it doesn't include the alternate cut or the segments from the Lancaster cut, which I wish it did. Uh, But for the time being, I think this is the best you can do for for the film. And at least it has a Blu-ray release. Uh, You can get the German version with the PAL DVD of the alternate cut if you want to. They are the same master on the Blu-ray disc, but of course this has the exclusive Kino extras, which are really good. So I do recommend this over the German version simply for those alone, and because this is cheaper and much easier to get here in the U.S., And it's also got original poster art, which is always a plus in my book. And I just, I hope this film can get a new transfer at some point. Uh, It is more obscure. It is less talked about. It is a very dark and disturbing film. So I don't know that that's going to happen, but I sure hope that it does. In any case, I do encourage anyone who seems at all remotely interested in what I've said about this film to please seek it out. Uh, see it for yourself. It is a fantastic film, but it is brutal. And it, ha- it, it literally, 
It does not present any answers, and it does not claim to have any answers. It is a very dark, truly modern film. It has not dated, and uh, it still packs that same truly hard punch uh, that it did originally in 1972. So that's it for this review. If you've looked at this disc or ordered it yourself or have it in your collection, uh, definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments below or just if you love the film as much as I do. Uh, or if you have the German Blu-ray uh, with that uh, alternate cut on the DVD, uh, definitely let me know your opinions on that disc and especially if you happen to have both releases, uh, how they compare. Um, I'm, I'd be very curious to see uh, people's thoughts on that uh, alternate cut on the DVD, for example. Uh, but un until somebody does a new scan of this film, unfortunately, this is pretty much, I think, as good as you can do. And so I do still recommend the Kino disc uh, for its positives and actually being able to see the film in HD in widescreen because uh, it makes a big difference over having to watch the old open mat versions. So with that, I just want to say, as always, keep supporting boutique labels and studio labels, keep your disc spinning, keep physical media alive, and thanks ever so much for watching.